um, came down Eagle Road and down Cherry Lane That's and the flooded Merwood, you know, flooded Merwood Park. And, and the problem for the people on Winfield wasn't from the back, from the channel, but it was from the front. Yeah. But it's I mean, a little bit of both. I would think about yeah. it. The water comes down the hill. We can't but go part anywhere. of the problem was sig significant issues with the stormwater system back then, which have been addressed. Pipes that were collapsed and and uh, uh, you know and and. and you know, different uh, drains that were, you know, either limited in their, you know, in their intake. And so that, since 09, that's been much better. And I, I say that just so people in the Sixth Ward don't understand that I'm not, I'm not talking about ignoring Winfield. We've done a bunch of things in Winfield, and even though it's one of the flood-prone areas, it's not been a problem in five years. Right. Correct. Right. Dave, if, um, if, if you could, the, you know, when you talk about the over 300 acres that flow down into Chatham, Chatham Village and, right. or Chatham Park and all, that, uh, that area takes in everything from, well, from Township Line north to almost Brookline Boulevard. Yeah, actually, up to Brookline. Yep, yeah. up to yeah. Brookline the Boulevard. The parking lot on Brookline Boulevard is, Arlington Road. is the high point. Earlington Road, and then from Darby Road, uh, it takes in by Chatham Park School, down Austin, down Chatham Park School, Valley Road. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, there's, 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 there's a, a Valley bridge Road. Somewhere. Yeah, there's a Valley but Road. To, the, the highest point actually is the parking lot on Brookline Boulevard. It's like, it's, frankly, it's one of the highest points in a township. But that's, that's, a, that's where a lot of that flow originates from. And all of that flows in to that junction box there on Foster. Yep, well here, if um, it all flows right to that point there, if you really want to think about it. To it, that, it, it right. It comes from two legs. This, this is a leg that goes up to Brookline Boulevard. This leg goes off to the east, and it doesn't go up as far. And it comes into, it comes into a junction box right down in this area. Right, because in the, Brook, in the um, China Park section, that's about 500 homes in there. I mean, so over the development over the years has channeled all that water. Oh, yeah. So it comes down yep. forcefully. Yep. Well, well, it, it always went that way. Again, again, you know, I mean, it always went that way. Right. But what it did is, is it piped it, it closed it in, it channelized it, and, it, and a few structures ended up where we probably prefer they weren't anymore. And again, it would, would, today, they wouldn't be there. Okay. Well, 300 acres is a pretty good sized drainage area. Put it in perspective, that Winfield Drive's got three mile drainage area to it. That's a, that's a big, big area that comes down in Winfield Drive. Dave, are there any other uh, grants or anything that we can keep applying for and you know, hopefully? It's, it's interesting you ask because I, um, I know this board and, and Larry and, and Lori and I always do. We're always looking for grants. We're always mining mm -hmm. for them. Um, we do not have a grant application pending now anywhere uh, mm -hmm. for, for any of these. Um, we were recently we recently submitted a couple grants for some uh, some intermodal stuff, and for actually stormwater improvements upstream of Winfield Drive, and and we haven't heard on the one upstream of Winfield Drive when we were turned down on the intermodal. Um, we do not this right now tonight. I don't know of any Jeff, but that doesn't mean they don't come up tomorrow or the day after tomorrow because they're constantly they're constantly coming out. They're coming out of DCED, they come out of the H2O program, they, they come out of DCNR. So uh, this task is pretty diligent about looking for them. Okay. You monitor them pretty regularly? Yep. Okay. To the point where Larry sometimes tells me I'm bugging them too much about it. Okay. <laughs> All right. You want to have the uh, public? Public this. Um, All right. We'll, uh, we'll start over here. Um, yes. Well, we'll just start over here and work our way. All right. Over. Uh, hold on one second. Hold on. Um, I just want to remind everybody, we want to keep it to three minutes so everybody has a chance to talk and um, just be mindful of, of everybody else. Okay? So we'll start over here. My name is Alan Polsky, 545 Kenmore Road. I lived at 201 Juniper Road for 40 years. Uh, two th 32 years without a drop of water. And in 2004, uh, the park, the Chenham Glen overflowed, and there were three feet of water in our finished basement and my neighbors, four houses that were affected. 
a lot of different reasons. Township came out, they sprayed, they remunerated. Cost me $48,000 out of pocket oh. to put my house back together. Wow. First time, 2004, no water prior to that. 2009, another two feet of water. Same thing. Uh, came before the board, I talked to the board, board said they would try and help. They sent people out. Uh, commissioner at that time was Richardson, came out, helped us clean up the drain and clear it. Uh, grains got clogged, water came in, came through the door, you couldn't stop it. Uh, you don't know what it's like to live in the house where you, every time it rains, your wife is wide awake at two o'clock in the morning saying, go check the park, go check the park. You know, it, it just got out of hand and then Finally, the last straw was in 2011. Same thing happened again. Water came pouring in, and I guess that was the time I, had, I came closest to having a nervous breakdown. I really mean, I, 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 I lost it. I didn't know what to do, and I'm the kind of guy that, that's the ultimate optimist. And I couldn't sell the house because I couldn't tell anybody to move into a house that got flooded like that. It was just no way to live. I didn't expect to live that way in Haverford Township. I love the township. I wouldn't move out of this township. It's a fantastic township, but our neighbors, myself included at that time, we felt deserted. The last time it happened, we called the township. Township said, sorry, there's nothing we can do for you. Okay, so then I was in business. I had a business loan. I had the house. I said, I got to make lemonade out of lemons because this is killing me. I can't live this way. And I can't live with my wife this way. And the commissioner saw how she was. I went and filed for bankruptcy. I took a bankruptcy loss. The house went up for a sheriff sale. I got out of the house. I, I basically walked away. And the people that know me, know my wife, we had a fantastic, beautiful home on Juniper Road. And it came away 40 years, nothing. But I'm happy. I don't have to live that way. I feel bad for my neighbors, because every time it rains, I know what they're going through. <coughs> Thank you. Um, Commissioner, would you like to speak? <coughs> Former commissioner. You're still a commissioner. commissioner. Oh, really? You were elected. Forever. You're it's always a commissioner. Term. Who do you have to sleep with to get out of that? <laughs> <laughs> Tom Broido, 207 Pine Ridge Road. And uh, I was commissioner in the 8th Ward from 2005 to 2009 and um, dealt with this, dealt with the second major flood in 2009. Um, I was aware of the 2004 flood. Um, there have been a number of, of stories and theories as to why this started happening. Um, the one that seems the most plausible to me is that the pipe that goes down from Chatham <coughs> Glen into the major pipe uh, on the other side of Township Line Road is, um, you know, uh, 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 probably not large enough, but the pipe on the other side of Township Line Road, which is in Upper Darby Township, as I understand it, is definitely not large enough to receive what's coming out of Chatham Glen. And in 2009, what happened is the water coming from Chatham Glen hit a wall when it tried to enter the main storm sewer and backed up. And it backed up at such a force that not only did it come out of the drain at the foot of Chatham Glen, but it also blew the cap off of the um, sewer at the top of Chatham Glen. Now think about that. It went uphill with enough force to knock that sewer cap into the air and, and dislodge it. Um, that's called a back charge, I think, or a surcharge, or back charge? Back charge. Back, back, back. And surcharge. Surcharge. Yeah, I thought it was surcharge. Um, and Amy does back charge. Right. <laughs> and um, cause the water to go over land. When the water goes over land, there are approximately seven or eight houses that are in grave danger. The four on Juniper, the, the two of the houses on Spring, um, one across the street in Spring, and one at the end of Foster that, by the way, was purchased by the township 
at one point because it constantly got flooded out and then resold to a developer who built a house and the house was sold. That should never have happened. M my point is that, yes, obviously weather has changed. I think whenever, um, Dave, with all due respect, whenever you use the term 100-year um, flood or 100-year storm, I think these people wouldn't mind that term if this had happened once in 100 years. But it's happened five separate times since 1999, I think. And um, the burden on some of these people to a great extent and all of these people to some extent is um, unacceptable. And I think that it's a shame that the government, the federal government, hasn't seen fit to um, provide funds for the remediation of this problem. But uh, somehow the township has to either find the funds, as Springfield Township did, to retire the homes along the low side of Rolling Road, which happened, I don't know, 25 years ago, um, and, and take the houses that cannot be, uh, you know, anything done about them out of, you know, out of existence, and then to hopefully solve the problem for the rest of the neighborhood. Uh, I'm reminded of the movie Shawshank Redemption. He wanted to build a library. He wrote to the state every week, one letter. And finally, they, because he was such a pain in the neck, they sent $500. And then he said, they said, don't write anymore. And he said, no, now I'm going to write two letters a week. That's what has to be done, is we have to be both a pain in the neck and um, persistent and also find some influential people in Congress and senators and state senator, state representative, everybody pulling for us because this is an unacceptable situation and an unacceptable burden on people who pay the same uh, relative burden of taxes as everybody else in the township. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Dr. Levin? Second slide that you had, please. The one, uh, the one that shows the Woodmere Way. I'm sorry, we, we've shut it Woodmere down. Way collector that you're putting through. I think you guys would do. I think I would have to go through the whole setup again. Okay, Dr. Levin, can you give us a minute and uh, have somebody else speak and then we'll power it up. We have to power it up and we'll allow someone, someone else to speak. George? Um, can I put this down? Uh, you know what, Mr. Daly? How about if I lower it flat? Because we put it down. Oh, okay. Shut it down. Sure. Okay. okay. I'm sorry. There you go. How's that? Can the light run in there? Good. Can we move over here? That comes down. Uh, first, uh, my name is George Daly. My wife, Janet, and I have lived at 328 Spring Road since November of 1975. I'm 70 years old. My wife is 68. First of all, I want to thank our Commissioner Chris Connell and the Seventh Ward Commissioner, Mr. McGarrity, for putting this special work session together. I also want to thank the entire board for agreeing to this special meeting. I would also like to acknowledge the efforts of Mr. Connell, Mr. Gentile, and Lori Whitup, who worked tirelessly over the last two years trying to get FEMA, FEMA grants for us, the flood victims. I'm going to ask for your indulgence. There's no way I'm going to do this in three minutes. There's about five people that weren't able to come, and they said I could take their three minutes. If that's okay, I'll try and be as brief as I can. Uh, also, if there's any questions along the way, because I have a lot of information here, and this is the information that Mr. Gentile can tell you, and Mr. Pannoni and Lori 
A lot of this information is what we use to apply for the grants. So please indulge me. Okay, uh, to say that this flood problem has existed for a long time would be an understatement. Mr. D'Amelio, if you don't mind, I'm going to pass these down. If you could just collect them at the end. I'll, I'll sure. hand them down here. Uh, this, this is the cross the street from where I live, and this is in the evening bowl in 1969. Pipe that we were all talking about, uh, unfortunately, they put it into a cast iron pipe, and in 1969, there was a, a storm, and where they joined the two, it blew out, and I actually have the... I actually have the bulletin newspaper that explains the whole thing about it, if you'd like to see that. Uh, this is a copy of that. Uh, and here is the paper. It's, it's all fragile and stuff because it is the original from 69. Okay. Which project are you talking about? Uh, down at Spring Road, uh, Chatham, Chatham Glen, they're calling it. If I may, I would like to read a letter to the township, to the then township manager, Tom Banner, in 1993. Uh, this, this letter was sent to uh, Commissioner Ben Kaputskin and Thomas Banner, our township manager then, in 93. My name is George Dale, I live at 328 Spring Road. I've lived there for the last 19 years. I would like to address the reoccurring flooding problems we have had on Spring, Meadowbrook, Lewis Road. In the past, when we would have a major storm, the inlets in front of my house would fill, would fill. The water would rise sometimes to the first step at my house, and then water would flow down Spring Road to Meadowbrook, then to Township Line. The water had a natural flow pattern down the street in a channel roughly 24 feet wide, 68 inches deep. Approximately 10 to 12 years ago, the street was repaved after a new sanitary sewer was laid in our street. Our water channel route was now reduced to a depth of three to four inches. Four years ago, and this, this I wrote in 93, four years ago, our street was once again repaved and that's when the flooding became a major problem. Some of my neighbor's curves were reduced to less than one half inch in height. Our downspout drains to the street were closed off, some completely covered with the new material. I dug channels out at mine, and I know I did it for uh, Dave and Carol and a couple of the other neighbors. We ended up this sewer, and it was the old type of sewer, it was this big. Okay, it was down right. to this much. I went out with jackhammers and opened it up so the water could go down. That was just for regular storms. Okay. In the summer of 92, our, our neighborhood experienced the first flood destruction, major. I personally had full-size railroad ties from my backyard washed out into the street. Uh, wood from a wood pile out back washed down the city line and the golf course. And unfortunately, water poured into our basement windows, now broken from floating debris, et cetera, et cetera, to a depth of 15, uh, 12 to 15 inches. That would be a blessing today. But uh, needless to say, our meager sub pump could not keep up with this rate of viable water and mud. Uh, it goes on with a little personal stuff. Uh, I, I, I spent, I, I guess, $26,000 to put a new driveway in. I raised the, uh, put it at a radical pitch. I raised my basement windows, the seven windows. I raised my Vilco doors above that flood elevation then. Uh, at this point, we obviously noted that the water was no longer flowing down the street, but down driveways. In August of 93, we had another storm which caused many of my neighbor's basements to flood. Fences to break, in-ground ponds to be lifted, etc. It was at this time we contacted our commissioner, Ben Kaputskin, took a tour with representatives from the township. Uh, Al DiGeronimo was there, uh, uh, the township engineer, and people from Public Works. February 94, I received a copy of correspondence 
dated February 16th, 94, that went to uh, uh, the township. Okay. I'm going to pass this down. I, there's no, really no reason to read that. I, I guess I already talked about it. I think this is important, though. This is the letter that came from the then township engineer, and it discussed the whole problem of different areas. I'm going to talk specifically of our area down there in Spring Road. Uh, to Thomas Banner, township manager, from John Gillespie, uh, public engineer, township engineer. Our east stormwater flooding, Hereford Township. On August 20th, 93, strong thunderstorm dropped two to three inches of rain in the township. Because of very high intensity of the rain, it caused flooding problems in low-lying areas. In response to your request, we have investigated complaints registered by various residents to find the causes of flooding. And then it lists you know, Spring Road and then different areas. The following is a summary of our findings. Spring Road, Lewis, Foster, Juniper. We spoke with Mr. De Mr. George Daly, who lives on Spring Road. He indicated stormwater flowed off Lewis Road at a high velocity through his backyard, crossed Spring Road, bypassing two inlets there, then flowed between houses. Uh, there's actually four openings that it goes down across the street from me, uh, along Meadowbrook and Spring Road, to a depth of one foot or more. And this is like raging water. Homeowners say spring uh, homeowners say that the area floods frequently, but when the township overlaid Spring Road several years ago, it changed the overland flow patterns. Before flooding would be relieved, when the water bypassed the inlet, it went down the street to Meadowbrook, then down the township line. This is the township engineer. Because the paving raised the grade of Meadowbrook and Spring, the relief route for overland water is now down the driveways in between the houses. The problem is threefold. One, changed drainage patterns, insufficient inlet capacity, and the speed of flow coming down Lewis Road. Uh, additional inlets on Lewis would help somewhat with the flooding, uh, basically regular storms. And then uh, that, that's that one. Now forgive me because there's so much in here. George, uh, we're working on ten minutes already, so I, I, I know. Okay, if wanna, well, if you want to just I'll, give I'll, us just, I'll just skip. I, I want to talk about my individual problem and this problem because. There was so much research, there was so much work, effort put into this. I have letters here that went to Mike English, the township manager in 94. Uh, I actually did a drainage uh, history. I actually did uh, with the old maps from where it used to be called Indian Spring, which all this water goes down my driveway. That's the old Crick. Um, okay, I, I, I'll, I'll just bypass this. You guys can read it. This, yeah, this we'll is all the technical information, all the stuff, uh, all the references that we went through at the University of Pennsylvania, you know, looking at all this stuff. This is 1994. I mean, 2004. This is what my wife and I lived with for four months. We were not allowed to live in our house. Four months. We were red flagged every possible way. From the electric company, the DEP, the EPA, because when the six and a half feet of water came into our basement, it broke two oil tanks, and so now we had four and eight, the, the water and six inches of oil on top of that. Jesus. Okay. These are newspaper articles. You're more than willing to look at them. They're about my house, our neighborhood, 
These are all, it's all here. Thank you, George. Thank you for Okay, well, this. hold on one more second. No, no, no go ahead. You, I'm just saying thank you for all this information. Oh, yeah, well, you're quite welcome. I'm got a, a lot of good stuff here. I have maps here from 93, the floodplain that I got from the government. Uh, in 2004, dealing with FEMA, they gave us the floodplain, and there are a couple streets beyond Brookline Boulevard that go into that drainage. Okay, forgetting all the personal loss, our house was for sale in 2004. We just signed papers for the house, then we had this flood. The realtor moved in, came to our house and said, you have to knock $60,000 off the price of your house because of what you've lost, you know, in the basement and so forth and so on. Okay, my insurance man was nice enough to do this for me. This is flood claim deductibles, just the deductibles, okay? I learned a long time ago in the insurance business, the cheapest thing about automobile insurance is the deductible. So I went down to a $100 deductible. Since 2004, my wife and I have paid $900 in vehicle deductibles. We've lost three automobiles. It's so ridiculous. Right now, we are in a vehicle that replaced the vehicle to, to a flood that had replaced a vehicle before that. Aside from that, with three times with the flood insurance, be it federal and or private because of the sump pump endorsement rider, we have paid $500 three times on those deductibles. Forget about all the personal stuff, the shop, all the stuff downstairs, the albums and all that. That is just those costs. There's just too much here for me. I'm, I'm, I'm starting to get it worse. I do want to let the commissioners know, and certainly the people. I was so disgusted, I guess it was the fifth time this year alone. It was on a Saturday morning. Once again, we didn't go down to shore or wherever we were invited, christening or whatever it was, because they said we are going to have a lot amount of rain. In most neighborhoods, when it rains, people go inside. In our neighborhood, people go outside because we have to move our vehicles to higher ground. The stream flows right through my house, my driveway, right through Mr. Dupee's house. Poor Mr. Bosser, he's at the crux of all this stuff meets. He, he was out of his house for two months. He, he lived with Leah for two months. All right. I, I mean, it's... <coughs> All right, we're at, we're at 15 minutes, okay? okay? So thank you very much. All right, well, If well, you want to give you. us any, any of that, that'd be great. Okay. Oh, I do have to say one thing. Oh, we have a copy of all that, right? I want, I did this a couple weeks ago. I made a phone call to Washington, and I called Mann's office in Washington because I had dealt with a local office two years ago, and somehow they lost all this stuff. And out of that phone call to Washington, Springfield people, Maureen called, and she said, Mr. Daly, we will certainly set up an appointment with you. And I asked Chris Connell, our commissioner, if he would go, and he said, certainly. And then Lori came too. And out of that one phone call, we're talking about other grants and so forth, they have assured us that they would try, couldn't guarantee anything, but they would try different avenues through the federal government, beat down on the state government to try and get us some grants that the taxpayers won't have to pay for all these improvements. Any of the stuff you want to read? Okay. We have DVDs of the floods, photographs, DVDs. It's all here. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right. Um. Dr. Levin? Abe, do you have a pointer? Jesus. Uh, is this the one you're looking for? Uh, 
Mike Levin, 414 Mill Road. Mike Levin, 414 Mill Road. Mm -hmm. I, I have left you a note. I just want to read that briefly. I'm not going to go into all the details, but I'll go into some of them with you at this point. I have read uh, Dave Canoni's report uh, of April 7th. I have not seen the most recent one, if there is one. Um, that report was prepared, the first report was prepared seven months after the fact. There are no quantitative data in that. Anyone who knows me knows that I deal with data rather than, uh, rather than simply saying, well, we had a flood. Um, the, re the report should have been prepared the day after the event. It should have included all of the people who were affected. So it's impossible to accurately determine the effects of flooding after seven months. The report states it did not flow into houses. On the other hand, um, there was seepage through the walls and floors that entered the houses. So water was in the houses, and it's unfair to say that there wasn't. Which houses? How much water entered? <clears throat> Where did it enter? That, well, none of those are known. There are no historical photos, even though information has been given that says that, this, that these, these data or these photographs go back into the 50s and maybe earlier. Um, there is, um, the descriptions which are given are somewhat cryptic. Um, no detail of the drainage swales, no utility maps. It's unclear where the drainage pipe was 48 inches and where it's 52 inches. The flowage of drainage area from B to A. I want to make it clear that I'm not talking about accepting choices, options, either one, two, or three. But I want to focus on number, <clears throat> on option number three. The overland relief is effectively, I'm sorry, let me just, uh, let me just point out something to you on the chart that is my concern. Because my bottom line is going to be that I don't want any changes that are going to bring more water into our property. We live at the corner of Mill and Earlington Road. I believe we have it. Yeah.